as a kid, I was always intrigued by the beauty of liturgy and the um, the priesthood I thought was really a cool thing. And I became an altar server as soon as I could, uh, partially for noble reasons and partially for less so. Um, you know, it was because I was always so, so fascinated by the liturgy and by the priesthood um, and everything that kind of took place on the altar, getting to be a part of that uh, was really interesting to me. But then also as an altar server, you were able to get out of class for funerals and things like that to help serve in the liturgy. So, you know, when you're a kid, you know, you're going to get that. Uh, but I, I always, um, I won't say I always enjoyed the mass as a kid, but I definitely, um, there was like an air of mystery to it that I thought was really cool um, and, and beautiful. Now as an adult and a revert back to the faith, I have such a deep appreciation for the Mass. Um, I remember early in my conversion, I, I started going to Mass every single day, and I remember thinking to myself and even telling some people, like, I can't imagine having a day go by that I don't go to Mass, you know? Um, and that was uh, an adorable sentiment from, you know, an early Catholic, uh, you know, a recent revert to the faith. But um, it is it is a beautiful sentiment that probably just got jaded by working at parishes, um, which I, you know, because I started doing that so soon after, it, it gets it gets hard to um, to juggle the reality of, of parish work and those responsibilities and those demands and kind of the intricacies of how familiar liturgy becomes, in and in I think in a negative way. Um, and especially as a music director, it's so easy to accidentally become desensitized to really the gravity of, of what is taking place in the sacred liturgy in the mass. And I, I, I think that that happened to me. Um, I was always intentional about in my leading the music, uh, the musical parts of the prayer in the mass. I, I was always trying to really pray myself, uh, you know, like sometimes people would comment like that, that there was something different about when I would lead the music for mass versus others. And I really think that the, the primary difference was that I was trying to always be conscious of the prayer. Um, where I got pulled out of that would be when having to be on top of logistical things or whatever. Um, but sometimes the prayer itself would get in the way of those logistical things. I remember one mass, uh, I was just so in the zone during the consecration. Um, and I was just, I was just there. And eventually the priest is holding up the blessed sacrament the recently consecrated Jesus Christ in in the Eucharistic form. And he's just holding it there. He looks over at me like, you gonna, you gonna start the holy, holy, holy thing? <laughs> like, or not holy, holy, it would have been the the great amen at that point. You gonna start the great amen? And uh, I was like, oh yeah. And I quickly got up from my knees and sat at the piano and did it. Um, he didn't say it out loud, but he looked over at me like, hello. The mass should be that, you know, it should be something that just completely engrosses you. Um, and if, if as a, a, a liturgist, if as a music director, like you don't run the risk of being that engrossed that you might forget a logistical detail, then there's probably a, a deeper place you could go with it. You know, um, there, there's nothing more powerful that happens on earth than the mass. And I think that having, having a heightened appreciation for, um, or even, even if, if you don't in instinctually see that in it, uh, praying to receive that, asking the Lord to to like illuminate your soul to to the the beauty and the transcendence of what happens in the mass uh, could really be uh, an interesting. It could take you to an interesting place. Um, you know, one of the ways that I just described what happens at the mass to some of my students early on was um, that it's like spiritual time and space travel. You know, like when, when we're kneeling during the consecration, like we're literally being taken on a spiritual level to the foot of the cross. Um, and, and we're there and there's a beautiful artistic portrayal. I think it's a painting of, uh, what happens at the consecration and you see, you know, all the saints and angels and you see the souls in purgatory and you see us here on earth and the priest and the altar servers and, and, and it just shows you like there is a whole lot happening here in the mass that is invisible to the eye 
but is so very truly there. Um, and I think approaching the mass with that air of mystery and that air of like, there, there's something truly awesome happening here that I'm only scratching the surface on. Like that's, that's the way to go into a mass.